What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Daily Psalm, where every day we're going through one of the psalms. Here we are on day 105 for the second time. Hallelujah. And here in Psalm 105, we get a little look at the story of Israel, a little recap of the story of the Israelites. And uh, here we go. Yahuwah's wonderful works in behalf of Israel. Oh, give thanks to Yahuwah. Call upon His name. Hallelujah. We need to offer sacrifices of thanksgiving. We need to give thanks to Him. And not, not only by mouth and action, by being obedient to Him. Call upon His name. Hallelujah. I mean, because He's... He's the provider. He's the protector. We call upon Him. And He delivers. We can't deliver ourselves. We can't deliver ourselves from our enemies. Our enemies are strong. The Bible says Satan is the God of this world. Meaning, He has control. He has dominion currently over the governments and... And the powers of this earth. Although he has to go through God to do what he wants to do. It's all in God's hands. But he delivers us from our enemies. Oh, give thanks to Yahuwah. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Hallelujah. God is great. Make known his deeds among the people. The works that he's done for us. The works that he's done for the people in the Bible. Hallelujah. God has delivered a lot of us from so much different stuff. A lot of stuff that we don't even consider. It was God delivering us. There's... There's so much I can name. So much stuff I can name. God has delivered me so many times. Hallelujah. Sing to Him. Sing praises to Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Speak of all His wonders. Hallelujah. Let's speak of all His wonders. Let's tell the world about Him. Glory in His holy name. No glory in ourselves. Because we're nothing. We're just His creation. We're just flesh and blood. But it's Him who provides for us. It's Him who protects us. It's Him who gives us any strength that we have. Any understanding and knowledge that we have. It comes from Him. Glory in His holy name. Hallelujah. Let the heart of those who seek Yahuwah be glad. Be glad. Because we were sons of God. We serve the King. Hallelujah. Seek Yahuwah in His strength. Seek His face continually. Let's seek God. Let's seek Him fully. Let's seek Him with all our heart. Let's be close to Him. Let's be right with Him. Seek Him. The time is near. And we got to be ready. Remember his wonders which he has done. Hallelujah. His marvels and the judgments uttered by his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant. O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. Speaking to us. He is Yahuwah our God, the Lord our God. 
Hallelujah. His judgments are in all the earth. He has remembered his covenant forever. Hallelujah. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. The covenant which he made with Abraham and his, and his oath to Isaac. Then he confirmed it to Jacob for a statute to Israel as an everlasting covenant. So this is the everlasting covenant that is spoken about in a lot of scriptures. This is the everlasting covenant that we see in Isaiah 24. Isaiah 24 is about the earthquake. The six seal earthquake. And it says the reason for that coming upon the world, it says they transgressed laws, violated statutes, and broke the everlasting covenant. So here's the everlasting covenant. And it's about to be broken with this peace deal, which is going to divide the land of Israel. Where they're going to willingly give away land and uh, create a Palestinian state in the land of Israel, which God won them back in 1948 and 1967. And something to look up, just look up uh, Israeli war miracles. And there's some crazy stuff. God was definitely with them. They were outnumbered, outgunned, and God delivered them. 1948, 19, and the, the couple following years, and also 1967. He confirmed it to Jacob for a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, to you, I will give the land of Canaan as the portion of your inheritance. When there were only a few men in number, very few and strangers in it. And they wandered about from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people. He permitted no man to oppress them. And he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones, and do my prophets no harm. And, uh, I'm just going to look something, something up real quick. So I think that's. Yeah, this is in uh, First Chronicles 16. We read the same thing. Let me uh, pull up the full chapter. This is actually the same thing in First Chronicles 16. It's the same thing in same Psalm 105. And uh, at least a lot of this. Oh, uh, yeah. So it's it's not completely the same scripture, but uh, there's a few verses that are th that are the same, and it says the same thing. When it says, do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Hallelujah. And he called for a famine upon the land. He broke the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. 
They afflicted his feet with fetters or cords. And him, he himself was laid in irons when he was locked up in the prison until the time that his word came to pass. The word of Yahuwah tested him. The king sent and released him. Speaking about Pharaoh, the ruler of the peoples, and set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler over all his possessions. To imprison his princes at will, that he might teach his elders wisdom. Israel also came to Egypt, Jacob. Thus Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. And it's the land of Ham because uh, if we go, go over here to Genesis chapter 10, verse 6, the sons of Ham were Cush. I don't know why this won't focus. Cush, Mitzrayim, Put, and Canaan. And Mitzrayim, that's... That's Egypt. If you uh, there's some translations of the Bible that when it says Egypt, it just says uh, it's translated Misraim. It's Hebrew word for Egypt. Son of Ham. Israel also came into Egypt. Thus Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. If anyone ever wondered where the Egyptians came from. And he caused his people to be very fruitful. And made them stronger than their adversaries. He turned their heart to hate his people. Speaking about God, turned the Egyptians heart <clears throat> to hate the Israelites. To deal craftily with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They performed his wondrous acts among them and miracles in the land of Ham. And we know all, we know all about that through the Exodus story, how the staff turned into a snake and then back and, and ate up uh, and Pharaoh's servants did the same and, and Moses' his staff uh, the serpent ate up their, theirs. <laughs> and uh, there's many wonders, many uh, plagues on Egypt. They performed his wondrous acts among them and miracles in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made it dark, and they did not rebel against his words. He turned their waters. Hold on. I'm just looking at this, and it says, and they did not rebel against his words. Uh, one second, I'm going to check a different translation. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. It just didn't seem to make sense. He sent darkness and made it dark, and they did not rebel against his words. And, um, but we know God hardened Pharaoh's heart, so, so he wouldn't listen to them. He turned their waters into blood and caused the fish to die. 
their land swarmed with frogs, even in the chambers of their kings. He spoke, and there came a swarm of flies and nets in all their territory. He gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. He struck down their vines and their fig trees and shattered the trees of their territory. He spoke and locusts came and young locusts even without number and ate up all the vegetation in their land and ate up the fruit of their ground. He also struck down all the firstborn in the land, the first fruits of all their vigor. Then he brought them out with silver and gold. And if you remember, the Bible says God had Israel borrow from the Egyptians all kind of silver and gold, all, all kind of jewelry to wear and had them just leave with it. <laughs> and then he brought them out with silver and gold and among his tribes there was not one who stumbled. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the dread of, for the dread of them had fallen upon them. He spread a cloud for a covering, and a fire to illumine by night. And this was, uh, this was Jesus in the Old Testament, the angel of the Lord. We read here in Exodus thirteen twenty one through twenty two. Yahuwah was going, going before them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them on the way and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light that they might travel by day and by night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. That was, uh, that was Jesus that was, that was leading them even though they, they didn't know it. He spread a cloud for, for a covering and a fire to illumine by night. They asked, and he brought quail, and satisfied them with the bread of heaven, the manna. He had all the quail, all the birds come and land all around their camp, and they just saw... Uh, And they were able to eat. And also rain down the manna on them. Which we're told is uh, angels, angels food. And satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened a rock and water flowed out. It ran in the dry places like a river. And this actually happened twice. And there's evidence of this as well. Meaning, it's still there. Uh, one of them. This is the rocket Horeb. And if you if you look at this uh, this example, you can see how big it was. I'm gonna pull up some other pictures, but you can see how big this was. See the rock was split right down the middle, and there's water erosion. There's evidence of water erosion. Um, all down the inside of the rock and around it. That's what it's speaking about. He opened the rock and water flowed out. And it ran in the dry places like a river. For he remembered his holy word with Abraham his servant. And he brought forth his people with joy, his chosen ones with a joyful shout. 
He gave them also the lands of the nations that they might take possession of the fruit of the people's labor so that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. And, you know, I was just thinking about it, you know, the everlasting covenant, the, what I was talking about earlier. See, Judah, the Jews, because, you know, Jew, the Jews aren't all of Israel. Most of Israel was scattered into the nations and are all uh, in end time Bible prophecy. When you see Israel and the house of Israel and Ephraim, that's uh, the northern house, that's believers. And Judah, that's the Jews. And, and the Jews, for rejecting the Messiah in 30 AD, I believe it was in 30 AD, when, um, when he was crucified, for rejecting him. They had a 40-year warning to 70 AD when the temple was destroyed and they were driven from the land of Israel. They, they were dri driven from Jerusalem. And Israel has been out of commission, out of the land, for the last 2,000 years until 1948 when they were brought back into the land. And, uh... He had them out of the land for 2,000 years. Brought them back into the land. And in 70 years, they're ready to give away some of the land that he gave back to them. And split Jerusalem. Not, I don't know how it's going to be split, but they're going to give away some part of Jerusalem as a Palestinian capital. So you can see why this is the as they call it, the straw that broke the camel's back. The straw, the straw is going to break the camel's back. So, when they're saying peace and security, and sudden destruction will come upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. And this is coming soon. The, the original release of this, this peace deal, the, the deal was presented January 28th of 2020. And uh, it's going to be completed, confirmed, strengthened, um, here before long, and I believe one of the guys that uh is gonna do that is one of the guys who's been dealing with this peace deal all along, Jared Kushner. You know. Supposedly the second most important man, sec second most powerful man in the White House. He's the one that's going country to country, meeting with all these different countries and getting in good with them. The days are near. Time is near when this is all going to go down. We just got to be ready. We need to seek God, serve Him with all our heart. We need to be ready. We need to be right with Him. Let's overcome, brothers and sisters. Let's walk in all His ways. Pray daily that you're found worthy to escape. The time is near. Let's spread the gospel. Let's warn the people. Let's shine His light and show His love in everything we do. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, call out to him today. We're living in the last days. No doubt about it. 
we're there. Not much time left. The Bible even tells us when it's going to happen. Psalm 90. Check out my Bible study on that. You know, 2020 is not a coincidence and it's not going back to normal. It's not. The plans are already in motion to bring in this new global government, this new uh, beast kingdom, antichrist kingdom. We're living in those days. And, uh, and from my understanding of Bible prophecy, Trump will still be in power. When all this goes down, that, that either means we're there now, we only have a couple weeks left, if that. Or that means so uh, he's going to stay in power for another few months or something. But we're there, we're living in the last days. And uh, billions of people are going to die soon. But what really matters is what's next, because any of us could die today, tomorrow. We don't know, we don't choose that time. We don't choose that day God does. I mean, even if someone tried to make that decision for themselves, it's up to God if they succeed. And uh, what matters is what's, is what's next, because after this life, there's judgment. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But if you're not saved... If, not, you don't, if you don't have your sins forgiven, then you're going to be cast into the lake of fire for the second death, the per permanent death of body and soul. God requires perfection in order to enter his kingdom, and none of us are perfect, so we can't earn our way to heaven. We can't earn our way to eternal life. None of us are, can ever be good enough, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus lived a perfect life. He did nothing wrong. And in his perfection, he took on the punishment for us, made the sacrifice for us. So that through faith in him, because it's not by works, so it's through faith in what he did on the cross. If you call out to Jesus and ask him to forgive you of your sins, to save you, and you genu genuinely, genuinely mean it in your heart, he'll save you, he'll deliver you, he'll give you the Holy Spirit, which is the seal, the promise of his redemption. And you will live eternally. But it's a walk as well. It's a daily walk. You got to be willing to follow Him. But the Holy Spirit is the helper. The Holy Spirit makes us want to follow God. And the Holy Spirit changes us from the inside out. Jesus is the bridge. He's the gate to heaven. He's the doorway. He's the ladder to heaven. He's the only way. He's the only way to be made right with God. It's through faith in what he did on the cross to forgive your sins. It's the only way to heaven. So give your life to Jesus Christ today. We're living in the last days. Not much time left. Thank you guys for tuning in. That's the end of Psalm 105. Love y'all. Shalom.